So I'm walking up the Lincoln Memorial, and it looks like I found a blood trail. Did somebody shoot a deer at the Lincoln Memorial? Or did somebody get shot? Oh, no. Just dropped their slushy. It is a little bit loud because I'm right next to a road. I got airplanes flying over my head. But uh, I am right now crossing over the historic Potomac River in Washington, D.C. You can see Teddy Roosevelt Island just behind me. And uh, got up this morning, and before the museum's open, I'm going to go to the National Mall and uh, what I want to do this morning is specifically look at the war memorials that are on the uh, the western end of the mall. Oh, there's a plane flying over my head right now. Um, but first, uh, it's off there in the distance. We're going to take a look at the uh, Lincoln Memorial and something kind of interesting. Oh my gosh. That dude just went by on a unicycle. He is moving too. All right, anyway, we're gonna go to the Lincoln Memorial because there's something kind of interesting there that I wanna show before we get to the, uh, to the war memorials. So this is on the north end of the wall, and this is a chiseled out transcript of Lincoln's second inaugural address. But what I wanted to show is right here. Apparently the uh, stone carver messed up and spelled future E-U-T-U-R-E. -E. And as you can see there at the F, they had to fill in the E. Dude, you had one dang job and couldn't even spell future right. So if you come to the Lincoln Memorial, you can look for the, uh, the typo on the north wall. Now, there's also this urban legend that the person who did the stone carving for Abraham Lincoln carved the face of Robert E. Lee into the back of his head where he could be looking back over Arlington. Uh, but I don't see it. I think it's just that. It's an urban legend. Well, the first of the three primary war memorials that we're going to look at today is the Vietnam Veterans War Memorial. Probably the most well-known of the, the three that are here. Kind of an interesting story behind it. I'm not gonna get too deep into it because Really, I can't do it the justice that Ken Burns did in the final episode of his series on the Vietnam War. Uh, but in short, there was a design competition that was held. They had about 1,400 entries, um, or just over, and the winner was a lady by the name of Maya Lin. Her design ended up being really controversial because people thought that it was too simple. It was just this big black granite wall with a bunch of names on it. and. Uh, yeah, there, there was a lot of tussling back and forth, but uh, it has turned out to be one of the most moving of the memorials. And uh, take a look at this. People make fun of me for getting up early, but right now, I am literally the only one here. It won't be like that all day. This, this place will fill up as the day wears on. Um, but as for right now, I have a whole place to myself. There are over 58,000 names 
on this wall. Each name represents a, a human life that, that was lost in the Vietnam War. Uh, it's hard for me to uh, walk along this thing and not think about men like my Uncle Dennis or my Uncle Larry, John Stillman, all who went over there and served. They all know people that, uh, that are listed here on this wall. Pretty, pretty amazing place. Um, now, like I said, this wall wasn't without its controversy. Uh, so there was an attempt at a compromise. So there's a second statue or memorial that's up here at the Vietnam War Memorial. You can go look at it right now. Before I get to the piece that I just referred to, uh, this is the third piece on the Vietnam War Memorial grounds that is designed to honor the women who served in Vietnam. Hmm. Now in order to come to a compromise with the people who were very much against the wall, it was decided that another one of the finalists for the design competition would have their memorial put up here on the grounds as well. This is called the Three Soldiers. Um, it's designed to depict three different ethnicities, Latino, Caucasian, African American, and uh, very well done, very cool. Originally, <laughs> the idea was to take this thing and put it on top of the Vietnam Wall and Maya Lin vehemently opposed that. So they set it strategically right here to where these three soldiers are looking out over this sea of names. Pretty moving. Looks like the Marine Corps is practicing for a performance here at the Lincoln Memorial tonight. So it's been kind of an extra treat getting to sit here and listen to them practice. Yeah, looking sharp. My grandpa was in the Korean War, uh, served with the 40th Infantry Division, was a uh, combat engineer. And uh, remember whenever I was a kid, him telling me all kinds of stories about his time in the war. Uh, so that kind of makes this next memorial probably the, the most meaningful to me. Uh, this is the Korean War Memorial. I really do love what they did with this memorial. Uh, these are statues depicting 19 different servicemen from all four branches that served in Korea out on patrol. And they're all wearing ponchos to uh, protect their gear and if you uh, if you kind of look from the sides it looks as if the wind is blowing and filling up their ponchos well that's that's by design that's to depict the uh, the cold winds of Korea all different ethnicities are depicted as well they're holding different weapons, like this guy in particular is holding a BAR. You have others that are holding M1 Garands, M1 Carbines, Radio Men. Very, very cool. last time that I was here there were just a ton of wreaths that were laid out here at the memorial from the people of South Korea basically thanking the Americans for their role in what they did during the Korean War. Uh, I, I think it's a shame how little appreciation and attention has been given to our Korean War veterans. Uh, if you look at a satellite image of North Korea today at night it's almost complete darkness. There's a little bit of light around Pyongyang uh, but the South 
just below the DMZ. It's bright, it's vibrant, there's a lot going on, there's lights. Were it not for what these men and women did in Korea, that whole entire peninsula would be shrouded in darkness, literally and figuratively. All right, well next, we're gonna head on down the mall and uh, take a look at the most recent of the war memorials, the World War II Memorial. Well, here is the World War II Memorial, situated, as you can see, prominently between the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial and the reflecting pool to the west. Uh, it's made up of 56 pillars to represent the 48 states and also the territories of the U.S. that participated in the war. I say 48 states and not 50 because there were only 48 states during World War II. And then there are also these two victory columns, one for the Atlantic and one for the Pacific. This is the most recent of the memorials, uh, dedicated in 2004. Very nice. Oh. When Forrest Gump and Jenny ran out into the reflecting pool to meet each other, I don't remember it looking like that. All right, I'm gonna try and speak over the sound of all of this running water. Uh, this is the Atlantic side of the memorial, and it commemorates all of the major theaters. So North Africa, Southern Europe, Western Europe, and then also the major battles. So here you have Tunisia, Sicily, Salerno, Anzio, Rome, going all the way around to uh, Normandy, St. Lo, the Air War, Rhineland, Hurtgen Forest, Battle of the Bulge. All of that right here on the Atlantic side. And then here on the south side of the memorial is the monument to those who served in the Pacific. So again, goes the major areas of operation, China, Burma, India, Southwest Pacific, Central Pacific, and then goes down to uh, some of the major battles, like Guadalcanal, which if you watched the Arlington video, it's where John Bassalone Got his Medal of Honor, New Guinea, Tarawa, Kwajalein, Attu, which is in the United States, by the way, Peleliu, Leyte Gulf, all the way to Iwo Jima, Okinawa, and then finally Japan, uh, where the atomic bombs were dropped. So that's the Pacific side. Very, very cool memorial. So this is on the western end of the memorial and it says here we mark the price of freedom. There are 4,048 gold stars on this freedom wall. Each one represents 100 dead or missing in World War II. Wow. All right, well that was the World War II Memorial here on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. Pretty amazing. One, one interesting thing that I've noticed, as I've gone to the Vietnam War Memorial, the Korean War Memorial, and now the World War II Memorial, not only today, but uh, and other times that I've been here to D.C., one thing that you notice is that you hear languages spoken from all over the world. Uh, there'll be people from China, Japan, Germany, France, Italy, uh, 
India, just all over. Um, it kind of serves as, as a bit of a reminder whenever you're looking at these monuments that uh, in all of the conflicts that the U.S. has fought, they've not only been fighting for the freedoms of the people in the United States, but for freedoms of people outside of our borders and abroad. Kind of, kind of a neat thing uh, for people from around the world to, to come here and uh, spend a little time honoring those men as well. Uh, so that was the war memorials here in D.C. Pretty amazing. Um, I've got one more day here in Washington, D.C. Got a few more museums to go to, and then uh, we're going to be heading back home.